And welcome back to Soul Blazer. Alan Triff here, going on to level 4 of Soul Blazer, or Area 4, I should say, which is the Snowy Mountaintop. Or, more importantly, the cavern we're about to go into. Which, as with all the other areas, is pretty much empty right now. So, do a little poking around. These things are pre recorded. I always wonder why I, when I stopped like that for a second, what was I thinking at the time? Oh well. I try to do the next one as it, as I go, not pre-recorded. Just not sure what I'm gonna do though. Still kind of wanted to do um, Elder Scrolls Skyrim's Ender All mod. Let's see. Yeah, the main inhabitants of the mountains are these little people. I think they live one or two years. I can't remember. So they'll mention it later though. First off, we have rats, which. It was rather refreshing since usually the rats show up in the first level. Standard RPG trope. And ice bats. Or skull bats? Well, you know, I don't live in the mountains, so I assume this is a normal. Oh, I have that magic on. Yeah, I, I prefer the directional magic. This is a little more powerful and doesn't use quite as much to be clever with it, but I just prefer like the directional one. Okay, and we have some yetis. A little lunge attack you gotta watch out for, but besides that. I gotta say though, this is probably my least favorite area. It just I don't know, as compared to Area 5, which is really cool. Or uh the underwater level. I'd say, yeah, this one probably. Either this one or the uh, the forest. But the forest isn't at the point where the game is still kind of new. Whereas here, it just kind of feels like it's dragging to me. Still, onward we go. More ice bats. I have to check into the frame rate. It's so weird to see them just appear out of nowhere on this recording. They, they don't do that. They're just quickly blinking whenever they first appear on the base. Okay. Uh, I can't remember. I don't think these are... Mo uh, bo these might be a base area. These might have a base. Yeah, there's a base right there. Wasn't sure if they were just like the ones that sort of continually spawn. Killing this one should do it. Okay. Undead reindeer killed. And. A mushroom. Pretty much all we're going to be unlocking here is little gnome people, mushrooms, and snails. So there's not much else you could put in the mountain. Maybe goats. Okay, these blue slides can let you go down faster. You can actually run up them, it just takes a little bit longer. I'll say this area is really easy to miss enemy bases. I usually have to go back and search this area for some base I missed. Usually at the end of the game when I'm looking for all the master emblems. Or for the three components of the Phoenix spell. But we'll get into the Phoenix spell a bit later. But I think that you start having people mention it in this one. Or some of the gnomes will tell you about it. It's basically the spell you need to hurt the last boss. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of pointless. It's there right there. But yeah, it should be editing right now. And here I am, beating up rats. I like to rather joke, it's a joke among my friends. I'll just be doing anything and claim I'm editing at the same time. It's just, if you ever have to sit there and, like, if you ever worked on a term paper and had to sit there and stare at it looking for grammatical errors, imagine that times 100. 300 depends on the size of the book, I suppose. You kind of get how annoying this is. 
Speaking of annoying, these snowballs, which are apparently intelligent, will chase you until you manage to get them to break on something. They do keep spawning when you come back to the area, so constant annoyance. This is one of those typical base patterns where you basically break one, and it just creates another one. And a long line until you get to the last one. Though I do think, I do recall that it's worth getting them all. Getting all. There's a rather big prize at the end. Okay, watch out for the skulls. Beat up the Yetis. Let's see what's happened lately. Uh, finally beat uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Really satisfied with the ending. Have regained some faith for uh, Bioware after the Mass Effect 3 debacle. Well, I gotta say, um, there's actually a series of small quests throughout Andromeda where you're basically preparing for one of the characters uh, setting up a movie night. And it's just a bunch of little quests that happen throughout the game. But it was kind of set up to where you can finish up the missions after it, right at the end. So literally the last thing I did in the game was have the movie night. And it, it kind of... It made what was already a good ending just a little bit better. So all the friends you've accumulated throughout the game, sitting in your quarters, gathered around the couch, watching, I believe, if I saw the title of it correct, I didn't see, I remember the title, but I do recall it was supposed to be like a Blasto movie. Blasto, the Hanar Spectre. Then cuddled up next to your love interest. Again, I chose PB. Good way to end the game. And it is one of those games where you can finish the last boss and still kind of go around to do things, so. I appreciate that, because it's more of like more realistic, you know, you get to the end, things don't just stop, and you take that game in, in particular, the Pathfinder's quest to go find new places for her people, and for any people, really. Yeah, you, you get a few days off, and then you go back to work. I'm kind of disappointed hearing that the EA might be putting it on the back burner, though. So we might not see a sequel for a while. I do want to say that the gray decisions in um, Mass Effect Andromeda, that's decisions that sort of... How can I best describe this? If you play the original, they, they throw a lot of options into either Paragon or Renegade. Which on the surface seems means good or bad. Realistically, it kind of means heroic versus renegade. How Superman might do something, as opposed to how Deadpool might do something. But the thing is, in the original game, and actually some of the, some of the original series, a lot of these decisions really were the uh, traditional, as Yahtzee, well, I think Yahtzee referred to it as the difference between being Mother Teresa and being just a maniacal baby killer. Meaning basically that your choices are either extreme good or extreme evil. And in Andromeda, a lot of the grade decisions were just that. Very thoughtful. Very thought-provoking. You had to sit there and be like, uh, not really sure, which is, you, can't go, you couldn't call either of the answers a good answer. Case in point, and I won't go into any detail so that it just won't be a spoiler, but near the end you gotta make a choice between a Solarian group and a Krogan group. The thing is, I love Krogan. Krogan are awesome. They've always been my favorite character, except Grunt who was kind of dull. But uh, Erdnot Rex and the Drac in the new one, awesome character. But at the same time, you're given, you're given this choice to choose between this, these two groups who are captured. And uh, one of them, well, again, I, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but just say by that point, 
if you, at least if you're the sort of person who thinks like I do, it was a tough choice. I wanted to help the uh, the Solarian group, but also wanted to help the Krogan group because one of my buddies was a Krogan, you know? And he was asking me to. Looking back, I really think I might have actually chosen that. Might have gone that way. The game is just full of stuff like that. Just situations where you're not quite sure what you consider to be the best. Are situations where you it really have to consider what's the best in the long term versus what's the best for right that moment. It's something if handled correctly could really be interesting in the next game. And much as I hate to say it, since a lot of my decisions kind of fit this, I would love to see the sequel have situations where that totally bites you in the ass. Uh, example, another small scenario this one. You find out someone who has th uh, thawed out a cryo. Uh, I'm running off, so I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this thought at least. Uh, you find someone who uh, got, was taken out of cryo has a disease, like an incurable disease that is contagious. And uh, you go through this big long quest around the finder. And when you do, she's being captured by one of the bad, like, the bad groups who wants to use her disease as a weapon against all these Milky Way people. And you're given the option of basically just uh, having to let the guy go with admittedly an incomplete version of the virus which may not even work, or disease which may not even work, or let him kill the sick woman. I'm sorry, let him go... Uh, yeah, you let him kill the sick woman and, and you know, straight up kill him prevent the disease from getting anywhere and yeah like the, the moralistic choice is to let the guy go because your uh, computer buddy basically says well the disease probably isn't going to work anyway he doesn't have a good version of it a uh, good sample of it but at the same time really if you're being brutal you know brutally truthful about it, like the, the survival chances of these people in this new galaxy, it probably would be best to just straight up let the guy kill her and kill him and keep the disease from getting out. And that's what I'm saying though, it'd be interesting to see him punish you. See, a lot of times like, that happens and there's really no fallout for it. Or there's like a, something else that happens because you chose the good option that kind of keeps it from being an issue. Like, they could very easily say, oh, see, he had an incomplete copy of it, so it didn't make a difference. That one guy escaped, but he basically had it done. It'd be interesting to have it become a severe consequence later that, yeah, it was incomplete, but it still worked, and we lost uh, 10,000 colonists because I wanted to save one woman. Yeesh. Where are we here? <laughs> so sidetracked. Okay, it's all areas on the slope, so yeah, a lot of these. And slime. Rats and slimes. We're going really back to basics in this area, aren't we? Okay. Anyway, Mass Effect Andromeda, good game. Recommend it. People were fussing about the animations and some of the facial expressions. I. I didn't find it too big of a problem. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, another mushroom. Also started playing Prey, which... A lot of it you've probably already heard. Very Bioshock slash... Deus Exe slash Dead Space. I have to say, I think they make the usual mistake of um, Dead Space did this too. When the when a bad guy pops up, there's like an orchestra sting, or the music suddenly gets really thrilling, which completely takes away any of the scare. 
So if you really want to get scared by the game, I would suggest turning off the music. Other than that, it, it seems to me very much like a, uh, a full game made out of the concept of, uh, oh, what's that Gmod? Uh, Prop Hunt. Because your basic enemy can mimic items. And because of that, every time I come across two of the same item right next to each other, I get very suspicious. Okay, this can be kind of annoying because these stupid bats will circle around you like this. Fortunately, I have the magic spell that does the same thing. Unfortunately, I don't have an infinite supply of um, magic to hit that much. Still kind of in the phase of picking up new stuff for my PlayStation 4. Good decision to wait that long. Because a lot of the stuff I'm picking up for dirt cheap, but uh... I think yesterday I picked up a Deadpool and Alien Isolation. I've only seen people play that one, haven't played it myself. Looking forward to it. Probably won't see it up on here because one, I don't have a scare cam, mostly because I'm frightfully ugly, and two, because, well, there's like a million horror uh, LPs out there. And I honestly don't think I could outdo any of them. Like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Board Minion. Hell, to be honest, I don't think I could outdo uh, Scum of the Earth, but, uh, who I really enjoy, by the way, and you should go check them out. Yeah, that kind of sounded insulting. Like, I was dissing them. I'm not. Scum of the Earth is awesome. I don't understand how they have such a small subscri subscription base. Uh, bats. Correct me, I haven't played Minecraft in a long time. Don't don't worry, I'm not gonna do a start Minecraft series. Everyone and their mother has done a Minecraft series. I like the game, I just don't find it I don't know. I, I think a lot of it is is that Minecraft is a creative time sink. If you're creatively inclined, Minecraft will consume your free time. I still have saves from huge things I was building by myself just for the heck of it and uh, I don't know I should have been writing it's probably why it's taken so long for me to get other books ready is that I was stuck playing Minecraft okay Temple of Hoarding Wizards which I guess itself is kind of a trope okay got another snail I guess the reason it's hard to talk about this is these areas don't really have a lot, there's not a lot to say. The same thing happened everywhere, like death toll came, took everybody. You didn't have like generals who were doing certain things in certain areas. It's not even until the next town, the next area, the uh, professor's workshop, where you start getting like situational stuff, like how Dr. Leo was dragged out there to build the machine. Okay, I'm gonna watch these ice things. Best is to hit them and run off. Who else is coming out? Let's see. Uh, Mr. Allen's Dragon Quest Builders. That was kind of fun. I find the placement stuff a bit awkward, but um, I've always enjoyed Dragon Quest as a whole. Dragon Quest V, uh, the, the Heavenly Bride, I think, being my favorite. game because I've seen plenty of RPGs where romance is a big part of it but that's one of the few games where you meet your character gets married and has a kid and, and that becomes a major part of the story usually you don't even get as far as being married it's just a case of oh well 
just romance kind of thrown in there, two characters, and I like that. I'd be perfectly honest. I've always liked a, a, a bit of romance in the story. Not too much. I've, it's action adventure. It should be action adventure above everything, but. Well, if you've read my books, you know I, I do like to see the main character get set up with someone. Oh, that's right. There's a secret. Yeah, right there. Gotta keep your eyes open here. Lucky Blade, new sword. And. Ooh, better chance of getting gems. I will take that. Sorry if I keep cutting out, I keep hearing things, and I'm looking back, and I don't see anything. Very strange. Okay, uh... Huh, honestly, this color set kind of reminds me of, um... It's the Ultima 8. The brown dungeons and blue dungeons. At least there are no zombies, huh? So we have the snail shoes, which means we don't have to slide around anymore. It occurs to me, I haven't played uh, Breath of the Wild yet. Again, uh, even though it's an adventure game, not one I would consider LP because so many other people have probably already done it by now. I guess a lot of people, some people have done this too, it's just, it's a bit more obscure. Especially nowadays. I guess this magic's really good, you just have to be accurate with it. Oh. Okay. And we got a. Oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. If something appears in the area that's unclear, it'll just be a floating ghost. Use the heck out of me because uh, I unlock one of those, then unlock the area. Like, okay, right here. Yeah, see? And I just wouldn't, for some reason, catch the fact that the, the spirit turned into a snail. So I'd go looking for the spirit and find nothing. Just... It's bats. How many times have you... What can I say about bats that hasn't been said a billion times? Especially the ones like this that circled around me. They're annoying. Let's see, what else could I... What I got? Uh... Well, what's coming out? Uh... I know the Crash Bandicoot uh, Insane Trilogy is heading on in our way. I'm looking forward to that. I'm a big fan of Crash Bandicoot. I actually used the nickname Crash for a long time. Always seemed to kind of fit. When I was in IT, well, Crash is an unfortunate name to have in pretty much any circumstances, especially in IT. Uh, when I worked at uh, Overnight Freight, Heck, even now, the, term, the name Crash could have sort of an application. Oh, shortcut. Sweet. Okay, it gets our health back up. But I've always been a big fan. I actually picked up the Skylanders pack with the Crash Bandicoot and... Uh... Oh, I forgot his name. The Doctor. Dr. Cortez. Cortex. Cor Cortez. <laughs> I don't even own Skylanders. I'm more of a Lego Dimensions guy myself, but I just wanted the Crash Bandicoot figurines. Just more junk I keep buying for myself instead of saving up for a new car like I probably should. Oh, there's Grandpa, the Jail Keeper. to the, uh... Huh. I thought there might be a path here. I might be wrong. We might have to go back 
to the village to find another path that leads here. We might have opened up an, uh, another exit in the village that leads to the other side here. I'm gonna go kill that guy off, I suppose. Okay, this is one of those shortcuts. There's a shortcut. I could have sworn there was a shortcut here. Okay. No, yeah, see, right there. That's probably from the village. So we should probably just find the shortcut and hop out of there. So we're getting pretty close to a halfway point. Might be a good time to get, get ready to stop. Yeah, we'll head back. Talk to everybody. We just unlocked and go ahead and cut it off for now. Let's see. We have three racing snails. Cute little reference, even if unintentional, to the never ending story. Which I should mention, if you have. If you ever seen the movie and ever been curious about the book, the book, surprisingly enough, covers both the first and second movies. Yes, the second never ending story movie. The one that people rag on all the time. It was not quite the same, but very close to uh, what happened in the book. Though I think they imply that the uh, the wishes taking his memories was something that happened to everyone who uh, had names. The childlike empress. Interesting book. I'm not going to say a must read, but uh, if you watch the movie, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. And one thing that does kind of annoy me if you've seen the movie, there's a scene where the main character, or well, one of the main characters, is, uh, his horse, Artax, they get to the swamp of sadness, and the horse gets depressed. And eventually the, the swamp flames because that's what it does. The swamp will turn into quicksand if you get you give in to your bad feelings. The book mentions that the main character, Atreyu, is uh, immune to this because he's wearing the symbol of the book, the R and the, the uh, sort of Ouroboros symbol with the snakes. But, uh... In the movie, of course, the horse doesn't talk. Because, and, and honestly, I'm glad they didn't make the horse talk because it would have looked really silly. The book, on the other hand, has him talk, and it basically it sound it's worse because it makes it seem like he really just gave up. It's like, no, I'm tired. Uh, no, our text, we have to go. Uh, I'm, I'm too depressed. I'm not saying depression is funny, but to have the character just flat out say that. Let's flat out come up. No, I can't make it. You should just go on without me. <laughs> At least whenever it was a horse that couldn't talk, you didn't the impression. Well, it's hard enough to cheer up another human. How's a human just going to cheer up a horse? There are a lot of little things like that in the book. That you can see why they didn't make it into the movie. But a lot of stuff did. Like the rock eaters, the uh, oh, I forgot what they call them. The guy with the bat, the racing snail, uh, the little gnomes with the uh, who are doing the investigations. Uh, Falcor, the luck dragon. Kind of strange when you think about it. There never was a never-ending story game. Oh well, I think we're getting pretty close. Oh yeah. <laughs> Please, man, if you're going to use magic, give me some warning. Let's see. Yeah, because it's so easy to miss stuff in this area. Uh, we'll get down there later. And there's the old man who wants to talk. Racing snails. Oh, yeah, if we talk to the girl, she'll go ahead and... Oh. <laughs> and off they go. And you can follow them if you want, but there's really no point. They just whirl around and around and around. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, you have to clear out the, have to clear out the whole course before they do that, but... Yeah, here we are. This leads to the next area, which we will cover next time.